Hi there, Physics 131. Uh, today is September 2nd, 2021, so uh, I thought I would just give a welcome message to all of you. Welcome to University of Toronto. Um, classes actually start on September 9th, which is a Thursday. Uh, my first class will be on September 10th, uh, which is a Friday um, at 11 a.m., and it'll be on Zoom. Uh, but if you want to kind of look around and see what's uh, going on with this course, uh, you can go to the q.utoronto.ca. Uh, you don't have to do any of this U check because it says before coming to campus. And of course, Physics 131 is a fully online course, and you don't have to come to campus. So you can just scroll down until you find something that looks like this on your dashboard, which is Perusal College Physics, Physics 131. You click on that. Now, there's not much on here yet. Uh, if you go to announcements, you will see there's an announcement from Professor Sealfon, who is in charge of the practicals. So the way this course works is that there are three Zoom calls a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11. Those, those are with me, in which we will be going through the, the textbook material. Uh, and there's one practical each week, which is two hours, uh, which is at some time during the week, on, according to your ACORN schedule. And those are run by uh, a graduate student a graduate student TA uh, in small groups where you'll be working through um, activities that are related to what's going on in the course and you'll be doing presentations using Microsoft Teams so there's uh, you know, Zoom for the lectures and Teams for for the practicals going back uh, to the course I think we might as well start with the course syllabus uh, this is always a good thing to look at when you are getting to know a new course so here's me um, this is how to reach me. I've got uh, a um, email address. It's good to put the subject as the includes the course name because I'm teaching a, a few courses this fall. I have a website. I have office hours on Zoom, which are just the half hour following each lecture. Also, I have uh, office hours in a little classroom called 125B, Thursdays uh, 10 to 11 and Fridays 2 to 3. You can find me in there uh, if you need some some extra help if you happen to be on campus, in which case you should do the U-check thing. <laughs> uh, there's the course website, which I've already shown you. Uh, April Seely, uh, here is her email. She is the course administrator for this course and can help you if you need to switch practical sections or, or you know, run into some sort of administrative issue. Uh, note, if you email April, you should have, you must have Physics 131 H1 Fall in the subject line uh, so that she knows uh, what you're, what course you're talking about, and actually you can use that same email uh, to to email uh, Professor Steelfon if you have a specific issue about the practicals. In which case you should put practicals at, at the end of that uh, subject line. So Physics 131 is a first university course, primarily for students not intending to pursue a specialist or major program in physics. Uh, topics include classical mechanics, dynamics, momentum energy, force, friction, work, power, angular momentum, uh, oscillations, waves, and sound. So that's what we're going to do this this fall. Uh, it ends in December, and then Physics 132 starts up in January and goes on to uh, electricity and magnetism. Okay, and optics. Okay, so page two uh, actually tells you what you are, what you need. So the first thing you need is College Physics Explore and Apply. Now I happen to have a paper copy of this textbook, but you will be using the electronic copy. So uh, this is accessed through an online pl platform called Perusal. And there's also Mastering, which also gives you a, a version of it. But um, Perusal is basically for reading the book and annotating it. And mastering uh, is for doing these uh, weekly homeworks where you're practicing actual do doing problems like the problems that you'll have on your midterms and final exam. So uh, the idea of perusal, it helps you learn faster by collaboratively annotating the reading and communicating with your classmates. Collaboration gets you help whenever you need it, makes learning more fun, enables you to help others, which research shows is also a great way for you to learn, and it helps me, the instructor, make the class better by emphasizing information that you need. If you have a question or information to share about a passage in the readings, highlight the text, type in a comment as an annotation. You can also respond to a classmate's annotation in threads uh, in real time or upvote questions you find helpful. Good annotations contribute to the class by stimulating discussion. 
uh, explaining your thought processes, helping others, and drawing attention to good points. So let's just take a look at how that works exactly. Course textbook, and the code is listed there. So I click on that. It's going to open it up in a new window. And I have to sign in. So what I'm, I don't have an account yet, so I'm going to register. I'm going to use my uToronto email. Okay, and confirm I'm not a robot by entering what I, the text I see above there and click on register. Terms of service, you can print them or you can accept them. Confirm my email address. This sends me an email, which I'll go off and check. Okay, so on the other screen, I just uh, got the email. It said, Dear Jason Test, the email address, associ address associated with the perusal account has uh, not yet been verified. I clicked on confirm email address, so now I'm going to sign in. Sign in. Got to do that. So, enroll in a course. I am a student. Course code. I'm taking it from here Harlow 9PNGP. NGP. Complete setup. Okay, so now I'm in perusal. And I can see that there's already a uh, reading that's due for class two, uh, 8 a.m. before class two. Um, called 8 a.m. Oh, and it's now asking me to buy it. So the way I buy it, I uh, can click on enter an access code, and then I enter the code that uh, came with. Uh, that I purchased from the University of Toronto bookstore. Click OK. And it says, I now have access to Etkina Planinsiken van Hoevelen. And now I can start uh, annotating. So I go back to my assignments, click on it, and it starts me in on the reading that I am supposed to do today. Introducing physics. In everyday life, a model of something usually smaller, simpler, or ideal as well. Model. Okay. This is interesting. It says that knowing physics allows you to understand many aspects of the world from why bending over to lift a heavy load can injure your back to why Earth's climate is changing. Will we be studying uh, climate change in this course? Continuing along observational experiments. So this is an important part of the whole textbook is that there are observational uh, experiments in which we try to find a pattern, uh, we come up with a hypothesis, make a test, then do a testing experiment. Um, if the outcome matches the prediction, um, then we could you know, do some more testing and find an application. If the outcome does not make match the testing experiment, then you need to revise things, revise your hypothesis, a different hypothesis, or make more observational experiments. And so this is sort of the, an idea of how to use the scientific method. So I got another question is, is this cyclical process used in the practicals? There's the summary of chapter one. Uh, continuing on, now we're into uh, chapter two, kinematics, uh, motion in one dimension. Um, so this is getting interesting. Uh, what is motion? Okay, at the end of the reading today, there's conceptual exercise 2.1, driving in the city. A car at rest at a traffic light starts moving faster and faster when the light turns green. The car reaches the speed limit in four seconds, continues at the speed limit for three seconds. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, do we know how far the car went in these four seconds? If you assign uh, D to be this distance, uh, then the average speed, I think, would be, would it be, let's make a little equation here. 
so this is called LaTeX. But I'm going to go uh, v uh, average is equal to a uh, fraction of d divided by t. Okay. And so now you can see this little comment has an actual little equation in it. And we can see some of the things. I can see a current conversation, all the conversations. Uh, this is the one I'm working on right now. Uh, table of contents. Um, there's read aloud. There's my assignment progress. So it mentions here I have started four conversations and have posted zero follow-up answers or comments. Okay. So other students will be able to see what you've posted and uh, the TA who is going through and checking this stuff may, may also um, uh, put some comments in there in case you have any questions. And that's basically it. I, I expect you to do that for every class. Take a look through the reading so that you come to class prepared. And if you want to get an idea of uh, what pages you're actually supposed to read, you can always look at the class schedule um, which lists what chapters we are on. And on this class schedule, I'm going to be posting my notes. I'll be posting uh, the recording, the Zoom recordings. In case you, you miss it, you can look at the Zoom recordings. Um, any other little uh, extra things. Like you see, I can see we're working through chapters 1 through 11 of this book as we go through the fall. Uh, and then you can see, by the way, that there are these uh, My Lab and Mastering uh, problems that are due about every week. So. To get to that, you can click on My Lab and Mastering. And you see a page that says Open My Lab and Mastering. So you click on that. And this is going to send you through a process to create a um, uh, My Lab and Mastering account and uh, also enter your, your code. So, uh, so hopefully that goes smoothly. I can't really show it to you on this platform right now because it just sends me to this instructor uh, home. But basically, once you're logged in, and hopefully that goes fairly smoothly, um, and it's sort of similar to the perusal but different, then you get a list of assignments. And uh, I can click just to show you a heads up. There's going to be assignments uh, about every week. Um, there are either homeworks, which are uh, part of the participation mark, or there's practice not for credit. The first two ones that you'll see are the um, videos and practice for chapter two which is not at all for any kind of marks. It's to show you some videos. Um, they're kind of nice. Here's one sort of Khan Academy style videos, which I may be referring to in class, but it's uh, uh, a nice way to, to kind of... Motion diagrams tell us how an object moves. The motion diagram for the turtle tells us that he is moving at a constant So this speed is a nice way of going through uh, motion diagrams. I'm going to be talking about motion diagrams in class, and so watching a video about it um, can kind of help. The other assignment you'll see right now is the chapter one and two problems. These are for marks, and if you start it, you'll see something like this. And there are 10 questions in this first assignment, usually between sort of 10 and 15 problems every week. And this one is a uh, multiple choice uh, conceptual question. Which of the following statements is not true about experimental investigations in physics? This is a chapter one problem. Here's a question where you actually have to uh, uh, type in a value. So determine the displacement of Zena in 20 seconds. So there's a preamble here showing you uh, a velocity versus time graph. And you're trying to find what the delta x is. And so you would have to type in the first 20 seconds. So if her velocity is 8 meters per second times 20 seconds, I think that's going to be uh, 160. And the units there should be meters. So it was meters per second. Cross my fingers. Click Submit. Correct. Yay. <laughs> OK, so I, I already I automatically can know if I'm doing the right thing. Um, sometimes there's hints that you can do. You can request the answer. Although, if you are you sure you want to request the answer? If you do, you won't get any credit for it, and stuff like that. So getting back to the syllabus, Mastering is a homework system which offers tutorial-style problems and end-of-chapter problems from your textbook, which are marked in real-time automatically. 
Each assignment contains one or more items which contain part questions. Some questions provide hints and feedback. Hints can be a clue or a simpler question to help you answer the main part question. You may receive coaching feedback if you answer incorrectly. So for all of this, you need a computer with a high-speed internet connection, a camera, and a microphone. Those are going to be particularly important when you're doing your Microsoft Teams practicals. Um, so, uh, and especially when you're when you're doing your midterms as well, you'll need a quiet space free from other uh, noise where you feel comfortable speaking, and free from distractions. Okay, there's the. Uh, Marking scheme 20% is from the practicals that will uh, sort of managed by Professor Silfon and you'll meet your TA. Uh, participation includes the mastering homework, the perusal annotations, and the in-class Zoom polls. So on Zoom I may be polling you and those, those are worth a little bit of points. And then there's the three midterms and uh, a final exam. So practicals, I'd like you to you know click on that practicals information in the practical syllabus uh, on on the Quercus site to read about that. Uh, as for participation, let me just sort of explain that. Um, there's three components: the mastering, the perusal, and then in-class uh, questions, and they're weighted sort of equally. So um, if you get some points, they'll be scaled so that each A, B, and C here have the same maximum value and then we're gonna add them up so you'll get that score out of a maximum value of 3n but then we're going to truncate it we're going to uh, cut you off at an actual maximum of 2n and then make the participation 5% out of 2n so in this way as long as you participate in at least two-thirds of the available activities you'll receive the full 5% for participation or I guess you could do you know, 100% of two of these things and skip the other, the third one or something. Um, at the end of the semester, if your combined mark on the midterm and final assessments is higher than your participation mark, then your participation mark will be replaced by your combined mark on the midterm and final assessments. So the participation mark is, in effect, optional. And so we're not going to be granting accommodations uh, if, you're, if you're ill for some of these um, components. Here are the midterm and final assessment dates, October 4th, 27th, 24th, uh, November 24th. Uh, these are each worth 15%, and these are online quizzes that are done uh, during class time. I'll have more information about that uh, as we get closer to it. And then there's a final exam, twice the length of a midterm, worth 30%, that'll be done sometime between December 10th and 21st. Again, all online. It'll be Quercus. There'll also be Crowdmark. Um, uh, for uploading images. Uh, you must work on these quizzes individually. You may not receive real-time help from any other person. And you may not participate in any form of real-time discussions with others about the quiz while you're, while you're completing it. You should isolate yourself in a quiet, distraction-free environment. Now you are allowed to use the textbook, you're allowed to use your course notes, you can search on Google, um, etc. You can use you know, a calculator on your phone and all that stuff, it's all fine. Um, although due to time constraints there will be very little opportunity to, to do a lot of googling around. If you miss something, uh, either a practical or a midterm assessment, there is a form called the Physics 131-132 Missed Term Work form, which you should fill out. Um, note that having another course scheduled in your timetable during a, the 131 lecture time is not an acceptable reason for missing a midterm assessment. We do expect you to clear your schedule and be available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, from 11 to a.m. to 12 uh, Toronto time. Okay, I think that's it. That's sort of a long enough video for now. Um, I'll, you know, be talking about this stuff uh, more during class uh, on September 10th, and this will give you a chance also to ask questions during that class, so come prepared with questions. Um, there'll be a TA kind of helping if you want to type in the Q&A. Um, there'll be a chat window and stuff, and so hopefully we'll have some fun. Um, I have a demonstration that's set up for you on Friday, and you'll be you know, voting on that and stuff. So I'm hoping you learn some physics <laughs> with me this fall, and that you meet some friends on Microsoft Teams, and then and hopefully even and get together uh, in real life sometimes, you know, masked up if you come to campus, obviously. Um, so that's it for now. Take care, and I'll see you in the 10th. Bye.